Welcome. Today, Asavloy uh, released its third interim report in 2023. I'm standing next to our CEO, Nico Delvaux. Welcome. Can you please start off with summarizing the report, please? Morning, Bjorn. And yes, I can do that. It was a good uh, Q3 uh, for us, despite uh, very difficult uh, market conditions on the residential side and despite a uh, difficult comparison with a year ago and with one working day last this quarter we still posted uh, positive uh, organic growth in the quarter plus one percent and also good to see that if we have lower organic growth that we can com overcompensate with uh, good growth through acquisitions net plus 11 uh, percent then very strong execution uh, leading to a record uh, a bit margin if we exclude HHI of 17.4%. Uh, a very good uh, operational execution. Also good uh, cost savings of uh, 550 million sec in the quarter. Uh, 250 million to MFP, 300 million sec additional uh, 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 short term uh, cost uh, savings. And then uh, also good work done on the working uh, capital side, uh, leading uh, to a record uh, cash flow of 7.2 billion sec in uh, the quarter. And then also HHI acquisition going uh, according uh, to plan. So yes, happy with uh, the quarter. HHI you mentioned. Now HHI has been in the group for a bit more than a quarter. Um, how is the integration process going between Asabloy and uh, HHI? Very good, very uh, uh, positive. Um, I visited also there in our uh, biggest uh, factory uh, in Subic Bay in the Philippines uh, uh, two weeks uh, ago. Also there you see the very good chemistry between their, their people and, and us. We're very happy uh, to be now part of the Asabloy family and we are starting to realize the first uh, synergies as well on the sales side as on the cost side. We also decided to uh, invest in uh, our R&D uh, team and hire more engineers, around 40 more uh, engineers. Um, to uh, uh, accelerate uh, new product development as well on the mechanical as on the electromechanical and digital uh, side. So, uh, yeah, very confident in the future. The transition to more electromechanical products and solutions has been an important growth driver for, for the group in the last few years. How has the electromechanical sales developed this year? The electromechanical sales represents around 30% of uh, group sales uh, today. If you take the last five years, uh, electromechanical uh, products have been growing double digit, whereas our mechanical uh, products only grew low, uh, single um, digit. Just so you clearly see that uh, shift from mechanical um, to electromechanical. And I would say that is further now accelerated after uh, COVID because there's so much more you can do uh, with uh, an electromechanical solution versus a mechanical uh, solution. And this year, year to date, uh, our electromechanical uh, products have grown uh, around 10%, so faster uh, than the group, so we continue to see that uh, shift. Very good. If we look a little bit forward, uh, what will your priorities be now going into 2024 soon? Uh, it's a bit difficult to read the future, but it's, it's I think, clear that uh, market conditions uh, will remain uh, challenging, uh, definitely on the residential side going uh, forward. So we really have to continue to focus on, on there where we can uh, uh, accelerate our uh, growth and then clearly also make sure that we are agile and there where uh, we see more challenging market conditions, make sure that we also adapt our cost uh, structure so that we can uh, protect uh, bottom line and, and cash flow like we also have done now in, in Q3. And then we will continue to invest in R&D to make sure that we uh, continue to come with uh, new products uh, and solutions because that's really for us a way we want to differentiate in the market. And then of course we have the, the continued uh, HHI uh, integration and making sure that we realize the $100 million synergies that we have identified for that acquisition. An exciting year hopefully. Thank you very much Enico for your time now and we look forward to speaking with you again as the, the year-end report in February. Thank you Bjorn.